Hi right, guys, Jordan from BMP Campers. I'm just going to do your hand of a video on your Luna 5 Star motorhome. So it's based on the Renault uh, Master chassis, and we'll start under the bonnet here. So on the left hand side, you've got your um, servo and your brake fluid just here in that reservoir. You can see you've got the uh, minimum maximum line just there on this side. Power steering fluid sits in this reservoir just here. Washer fluid in this one. Engine coolant sits in this reservoir and your engine oil gets topped up through here. You can see there, no kind of uh, sort of creamy coloured stuff on there. So there's no water in there inside the engine. Um, and obviously it's had a full service as well. Engine oil dipstick is this one just down here. You need to squeeze the sides together to pull that out. And then just make sure that it's clipped back over when you put it back. The air filter sits inside this box just here. So you just need to take this cover off and then you can get into your air filter. Um, you've got your transmission fluid down here. So you've got a dipstick for that there and the actual filling point just down there. And you've got your engine battery positive terminal just there. So if you want to jump start the vehicle, essentially your positive terminal is there for your engine battery. Um, and quite often there's a, an allotted um, negative point somewhere, uh, but I can't quite remember where it is on these Renaults. Basically any kind of clean, nice metal that you can find around here will be good enough for a, a negative point for the, for the battery there. Um, but basically if you just positive on there and negative anywhere else that you can find, um, that's the way that you jumpstart the vehicle. Uh, but like I said, there probably is a specific negative point. I mean, I can see down there, there are a couple of earthing points down there. So if you can get on them, that'd be perfect. Um, but yeah, maybe I should have uh, looked up where they are before the video, to be honest. But um, yeah, even any, any of this, all this sort of engine mount over here, that'd be absolutely fine for an earth. Anything like that really, or if there's like a, an engine hoisting point somewhere, that there, look. So that'd be a good earth, that one. Anyway, um, so that's under the bonnet. You can see there you've got vehicle tracker, bits and pieces there. Um, your fuel must be on the other side, because I thought it was that one just for a minute there, but it's not. Um, so yeah, the reason you've got the transmission fluid there is because you've got the automatic gearbox, obviously. Um, so if you never needed to get to that, that's your automatic transmission fluid that I showed you under the bonnet there. This on and off switch here is power for your reversing camera just in case you weren't aware. You have got the air conditioning switch, um, recirculate there, and all of your sort of temperature settings, fan speed settings, all that sort of thing, um, just in there. Your hazard lights work from that switch just there, just like on most cars. And you can open up your vents and twist them around and move them as and where you want to. Um, the seats are kind of, you know, all singing, all dancing, if you like. Uh, so you can obviously move it forwards with this front lever like a lot of cars. But you can also swivel the entire seat around, uh, lift the seat up and down, forward and backwards. You can move the back of the seat with this one. So once you sat on these seats, they're really, really comfortable. These are proper uh, motorhome style or specifically made for motorhomes really. Um, you know, so they're really nice and comfortable. Uh, so that's them. These two vents just here for your fridge. So if you have the fridge, fridge lit up on gas, you should be able to feel some hot air coming up through the top of the vent just here. So if I just show you why that is, we lift this out. Oops, that bit on the floor. So essentially this is the top part of your um, fridge's exhaust. So the, the burner sits down here and it comes straight up here and comes out through there. Um, you have also got this piece that goes on other way around, flips in like that, and then you've got a little piece that goes in at the top, so you push that in, and that's that. So that's the whole uh, exhaust setup for your fridge, just in case you wanted to double check that it was definitely working, you can just put your hand over there like that. Uh, your door has got a retaining catch up there, but you do have to give it a little bit of a slam to get that to go in, um, just like that, but that does give you a nice strong seal you know, to allow the door to not move like that. You've also got your barn door. So if you wanted to, 
you can have the barn door across and lock it in place like it is there. And of course you can have it open um, in its standard position. Your D-bar lock, so that'll come across as and when you want it to. Your electric step has the switch just here, so it goes in and out like that. At the back here, this is all of your sort of toilet cassette, all that sort of stuff. So the actual cassette itself comes out just here. Uh, there's a little yellow bit that goes in there. So if you push it all the way forwards, that locks in place and then you can't take this out. Uh, it also pushes this flap back so that you can actually get into the cassette from inside. So without that being all the way in, you won't be able to use the cassette properly. So lift up on that little catch and then you can pull it out. Once it's out, all that you need to know really is that you empty it out from here. So this swivels round and then you empty it out from this cap. Um, once you have emptied it out into your LSAM point or wherever you are on the campsite, you need to fill the cap up with your blue fluid, pour it back in and swish it around and then literally just push it all the way back in. So that's the cassette part itself. Above that, you've got your flush fluid. Uh, and so basically you just top, top this up as and when you need to and you'll know when you need to because you'll run out in the, in the bathroom. But this is your pre-mixed pink fluid and water is the mix that you need to make. Um, I say sort of like 10 to one, I think, uh, but it will tell you on the bottle if you buy some pink fluid. We've got them here on site as well if you need them. But um, So yeah, this is your pink fluid that you put in here. This is your flush fluid. So that closes over like that. And then with the key, I haven't spent much time working out which keys do what lock, to be honest. So that'd be, oh, lucky guess. So, you saw what I did there. Now that I've got it to this position here, I can't open that, it's locked in place. When I put it there, I can pull that open. There is a little bit of a seal around there, which is the original seal. Um, so when you do put it to its unlocked position, you do kind of have to pull it a little bit, but um, it's quite normal uh, to have to do that. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your fresh and wastewater drains. So the blue one, obviously for your fresh water, gray for the waste, and you do just literally hold on to this part here and twist to the end. So the idea is if you're at a campsite and you've got a, a drain off point that you have to drive over, just drive the back of the vehicle over that and then you can pull the waste down and drain it out. Obviously the fresh water is slightly different where you can just drain it out wherever you like basically because it's just, just, just plain water. Um, but the wastewater, you do have to drain them out in specific places. So uh, waste and fresh um, and that's your water drains. Bike rack at the back of the vehicle. It's actually the new style bike rack as well. Um, I don't think we fitted it, but it does look like it's been fitted pretty recently. Um, so actually, don't hold me to that. We might have fitted it, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, it looks pretty new to me. Um, so that's there if you want to use that. Reversing camera up there, looks like it's been fitted quite nicely. Um, you know, nice neat with the, with the rubber grommet there as well. So not too much sort of on the show. Right, on this offside here, You've got your boiler vent, so that literally just sort of comes off just with a little pull. Um, so if you have your boiler lit up on gas, again, similar to the fridge, you'll feel hot air coming out through either side of the top of this vent here. Um, when you aren't using this, you should really have this cover on, but it's not kind of like, a, it's not something you have to do every time you turn it off. It's just purely if you're going to leave the van for a little while, pop the cover back on. It just stops spiders and anything nasty getting inside there because quite often you'll find even little mice and stuff will find their way into that uh, and then just fill it up with stuff, basically, uh, and you won't be able to use it. This cupboard next door to that is really important. Um, a lot of this stuff is normally only uh, sort of reachable from the inside of the vehicle, so it's really helpful. Um, that Luna have put this on the outside because it's much easier to get to. So your boiler itself is this grey part just here. So you can see you got the fresh and the waste, uh, the fresh, the, the cold and the hot feed, sorry, not fresh and waste, cold and hot, um, going to that. So you've got one fresh one coming directly from the tank and one hot one coming out, going to the taps. Um, so if you want to drain this boiler out, you need to have this lever in the position it's in now. So because it's getting colder at the moment, we've been going around emptying out all of the, all of the boilers out uh, from all of their water. So if you want to fill this boiler back up with water, which you have to do before you try and use it, 
all you have to do, I'm going to leave it in this position here now, because this is now in the closed position, basically. So if you pull the water through, like I'll show you in a minute how to do it, but if you fill this boiler up now, all the water that comes through this pipe, through there and into the boiler, will stay in the boiler. If this was in the upright position like it is now, and you try to fill the boiler up in the way that I'll show you in a minute, all the water that you just send to it will just go straight down here out onto the floor. All right, so lifting this up basically just drops it onto the floor. So you can see there, just underneath here is basically just a pipe that goes out underneath the vehicle. So leaving it flat allows the water to go from here all the way through and into this boiler. All right, so the reason that you would drain it out is like I said, if it's going to get really, really cold, like sort of like zero degrees, almost like that, you need to make sure that those boilers are drained out because if the water is, if the boiler is full of water uh, and it freezes, what will happen is, is, is it will freeze, expand, and any of these little fittings here, which are called John Guest fittings, will just crack um, and, and you know, you have leaks all over the place. So you need to make sure that you drain that out. If it's going to get really cold and you're not going to use it, drain the boiler out by lifting it up like that. If not, leave it like that, fill it back up and you can just carry on using it like normal. These two here are gas isolator taps. So this one here is for your boiler and that one there is for your heater. So if you wanted to isolate them from the gas, all you have to do is just do that. Turn it 90 degrees and that's it isolated. So that's just that there if you're in an emergency or if you're worried about something for whatever reason. Um, water pump sits behind there. Um, you don't need to know anything about it really. It's just a pump. It just comes on when you use it, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, but you have got a little filter there for that. Your fresh water inlet is this one just here. You do have to unlock that with the key uh, to, to get that open, but it's nice and easy. You've also got a 12 volt socket just here if you should need a, a drop-in pump you know, if you need power for, a, for a, a submersible pump to fill this tank up with, but normally you just have ho access to a hose or something like that to go in there. You then got your hookup point. So the hookup point is really helpful if you've got, you know, if you're on a campsite, if you've got access to a hookup cable it is really, really helpful because it means that you can, basically it means you can use your three point sockets, your household two 40 volt sockets, and it means that your ledger battery is constantly being charged up. So you haven't got to worry about any battery drain, nothing at all. So that's there. Uh, if you have access to a hookup point at home as well, it's really important. It's really helpful to keep that battery up together um, and stop it from draining out too quickly. Gas locker, just here at the front now on this soft side. Um, so you've got, this is a six kilo propane bottle. Um, just pop that back on there, that's just from our testing. So, all you need to know really uh, is turning the bottle on anti-clockwise around to the left, turning it off it's clockwise around to the right. Um, I'm going to leave it on just for a minute just so I can show you a few bits inside. Um, you can obviously fit two of these bottles in here side by side if you want to. Uh, you've got five years on these um, pigtails, so you've got 2020 on there, so you've got until 25 to replace this. When you want to put it onto your next bottle, you do literally just turn this bottle off, undo this nut here, put it onto the new one, tighten it on, and then turn the other one off. It's as easy as that. All right. Diesel filling point, like I said, is just down here, and you need your ignition key to get that open uh, and take it off. Chassis plate is in here as well, although there probably is another Luna upgraded one somewhere as well. Okay, so um, I showed you around here briefly earlier, but like I said, you've got this power button here, which gives you your power for your reversing camera. So if I was you, um, to be honest, we'd normally wire it up to a, an ignition live wire so that it will only work when your ignition's on, but obviously they wired it up so you can just turn it on and off uh, whenever you like. So just please make sure that you turn this button off if you're not using the camera um, because I can just guarantee you that if you leave that on for a couple of weeks or so, even if you don't have the camera on, um, it will drain your battery down a little bit, okay? So just uh, try to remember to turn that button off if you're not using the actual camera. Whilst you're driving and all that sort of stuff, leaving that on is absolutely fine, but when you stop and you're not going to use the camera, just switch it off. 
uh, it's always good practice. Right, so in the back of the vehicle, you've got your um, control panel just here above this uh, forward facing seat. So I'll show you that first, probably the most logical way of doing it, I would have thought. So the main power on and off switch is this one on the top left. So turning that off just turns all 12 volt power off to pretty much everything in the van. Um, so I'll turn that on. You can then flick through here and just basically it will tell you all of your levels. So you've got 12.9 in the leisure battery, which is really, really good for a resting battery rate. Uh, so that's back to the home screen. So you just flick through. So you don't have to worry about these. These are just, you know, silly really. Um, alarm, you can use that one if you want to. So that's literally like an alarm. You can set timers and things. Set the clock timer, tank fill. Again, you don't need to worry about that. So pump select, leave that one an internal because you've only really got an internal pump. Wastewater, so you can see the level in your wastewater tank and fresh water. So both empty because like I said, we've been going around draining all the waste and fresh tanks out due to the cold weather. Vehicle battery level. 12.2 volts which again i mean 12 volts is a good battery rate uh you know a resting rate so 12.2 is absolutely fine and 12.9 in the leisure i wouldn't be surprised if there is a solar panel on the roof somewhere looking at that battery level well, i'm not sure it might not be it's either it's a really good battery or you've got a solar panel you've got a solar panel that's why <laughs> so you've got Solar controller in there. So that's a Victron uh, solar controller. If you wanted to, just to let you know, um, that is actually a duo solar controller. So at the moment, because you can see there, there's two wires, PV is the solar panel voltage coming down from the panel. Uh, and you've got battery one and battery two. And at the moment you can see battery two isn't actually wired up. So basically when people fit these, they would only price you up to fit um, one wire, one battery to this unit, all right? Unless you ask for it to be fitted to both engine and leisure, they won't normally fit it to the vehicle battery at all. So only point being, basically, if you wanted to in the future, you can get us or somebody to put a positive and negative wire from the battery to there and run it down to your engine battery, which like I said, is down under the floor in the cab. And then this solar panel will actually charge your engine and your leisure batteries at the same time via that solar panel. So that's the reason why on this unit here, the vehicle battery is down at 12.2, but the leisure's up at 13 because the vehicle battery isn't connected up to that solar panel at the moment. So I just thought I'd let you know that um, it's not a bad thing by any means. The leisure battery is really the one that you want this to be connected up to. But I just thought I'd let you know you have already got the duo controller there so you could run the wires from two to the to the engine battery if you wanted to. If you're not bothered, then I wouldn't worry about it, but uh, <laughs> just want to let you know. So uh, you've also got your Vision Plus TV aerial booster up there, which you can see is on at the moment. Oh, drop the phone, and it doesn't need to be, so I'll just switch that off. Uh, and your tilt and turn TV aerial up there as well. Um, I will go through the last couple of bits in the on the on the control panel in a second but um, paperwork for the vehicle will be in this brown box here we just put all the paperwork in there basically awning winder is this one just here this unit at the back is your PSU so that's a power supply unit and you can see there it says PSU 2007 it's a sergeant unit and it's an EC 200 so these are really common uh, little units all of the auto trails use these um, you know lots of lots of vehicles of this um, sort of period will be using these EC 200s so basically you've got 12 volt fuses here and here and it does tell you where it says fuse allocation it does tell you exactly what fuse does what okay so if you ever had a problem with anything obviously you can let us know first but you can also have a little look in there and just make sure that your fuses are okay uh, according to what your problem is. You've also got MCBs and an RCD in there. So that's your mains power trip switches, which it also tells you what they do. So as well as this being a power supply unit um, and your fuses and trip switches, it's also your battery charger. So when your electric hookup's plugged into the vehicle, if this little button here is on that says charger, which it is at the moment, 
uh, your battery charger, which is actually that box just inside there, will come on and then start charging up your leisure battery, okay? Not as important on this particular van because you've got the solar panel on the roof constantly charging it up anyway, but for example at night or if it's inside or whatever, having that that um, hookup plugged in and having the charging coming on does put you at a, yeah, a bit of a peace of mind uh, for the for the leisure battery voltage. Um, obviously there are things in this van that won't work unless your hookup's plugged in as well, such as the electric heat, the electric water heater, the electric heating system, both of which can be used on gas as well if you want to. If you don't want to use the hookup at, up at, you know, at all, you can use this on gas, you can use your heater, your water heater on gas, but you know, there's various things that need to be, that have the hookup plugged in to, to work. So um, yeah, anyway, so up on the control panel, uh, you haven't got to worry about this button here. All this does is switch what battery you're using basically. So if I press this now, What's happening now is, so if I turn, just for, for example, if I turn this light on, the light's working, but currently, because I've got this button on here, instead of drawing it from your leisure battery, which is what you want it to do, obviously, um, it's now drawing it from your engine battery instead. So this light right here is being powered up by your engine battery, and there's no reason that you would want to do that basically. Um, the only reason you should ever use that button there is if your engine battery is flat and you can't start the vehicle, you can sometimes trick it. So if you put your hookup cable into the vehicle and then press this button on, it sometimes actually charges up your engine battery instead of the leisure, if that makes sense. So if your engine battery is flat and you can't start it, turn this button on and plug your hookup in and then it should charge your, your vehicle battery, but it doesn't always work. So just, um, you know, you can basically just ignore this button in all honesty. Um, water pump, so you can turn that on, but obviously at the moment I've not got any water in the system at all. So I'm just gonna turn it off because it's just gonna be running on and not doing anything. This one here should do your awning light if I'm not mistaken. Oh, off my head. Oh, it's not on there now. There you go. So that's what that switch there does. Okay, so that's your control panel, nice and simple. I mean, really, you just use the, the main on and off switch and your pump are the other are the main ones. Um, when you want to fill your boiler up for the first time, because like I said, it is empty at the moment, you need to fill the van up with fresh water from the inlet point that I showed you on the outside. Um, turn your pump switch on and then come over here to your tap. Once you've done that, all you need to do is lift up this tap in the left hand side position like it is there. You then just essentially leave that pump running and leave the air, because there'll be lots of air here, it'll just be coughing out with no water basically. Um, leave it going uh, for you know a minute or so and then eventually the water will start coming through here. Once it starts coming through you can then turn the tap off uh, and then try it on the cold side allow any sort of air to come out from that side as well. Turn the tap off and then you can leave it, all right? Once you've done that, you can know for a fact that your fresh, uh, your cold and your hot sort of uh, lines all the way around the vehicle are release of any air and up to pressure. Once you've done that, you can forget it and just do whatever you like. You can use your heater, you can use your water heater, doesn't matter, all right? Actually, I take that back. You can use the heater whenever you want, but um, the, the water heater is really important that you make sure that it's full by doing what I've just shown you there before you try and do any of that, okay? Okay, so the fridge is nice and simple. It's a three-way fridge. Um, so it works on gas, mains, so that's your hookup, or 12 volt. So the gas is the one that we can use right now because I've not got a hookup plugged in. I'm not running the engine, I'm not driving, um, but I do have the gas switched on. So if I want to light it up on gas, all you need to do, turn it to the right and, and leave it, that's it. So you heard it clicking, igniting, I don't know if you did on the video or not, but basically when you turn it over like that, it will start clicking and igniting um, and it will light up and that's it, you just leave it. That is honestly it. Um, there's no peephole to see the flame in this one. So 
hearing the noise and having a look, little look in there it's a bit difficult to see from here but at night uh, there'll be a little amber light in there if the amber light is steady then it's on and you can also put your hand over that vent outside like i showed you on the outside so that's how you use it on gas if you have an electric hookup plugged into the vehicle you'd want to go to the next one here so 230 volt and then just leave it again so literally just if you have a hookup plugged in choose 240 or 230 and leave it and it will get cold after a couple of hours the 12 volt is slightly different um the 12 volt is only for when your engine's running so if you've already pre-cooled the fridge which is what you need to do either on gas or mains for a good few hours before you leave to wherever you're going you can then switch over to 12 volt start the engine up drive to wherever you're going and then when you eventually stop and park up and you know get yourself ready you would then need to switch over to either gas or mains again all right so for example if you go to your campsite you would have selected 12 volt before you left get to your campsite get ready you know it's not like something you have to do instantly get your hookup plugged into the vehicle or if you're not using a hookup turn your gas on and then put it on back onto either one all right the reason for that is just so you know the 12 volt on the fridge there doesn't get the fridge cold by itself it just can't it's not the element in the back isn't powerful enough 12 volts isn't enough to get this fridge of this size cold so all it does is retain whatever temperature you put inside it via the gas or the mains all right so uh that's that the reason why i say that as well is because you can't leave your gas on the 12 volt is the only way that you can use it whilst your engine's running you cannot or you should definitely should not leave your gas on when you're driving uh, for any reason all right so the 12 volt because obviously you also can't have a hookup plugged in whilst you're driving so the 12 volt is the only way you can use it whilst driving so that's the fridge um cupboard next door just a load of storage uh the tails there for your tap and the waste pipe if you ever needed to get to any of that loads of storage in there and your sort of handmade cutlery drawer got down here a couple more of the gas isolators so the top one there is for this cooker and the bottom one is for the fridge so again if you wanted to isolate either of those two from the gas you just do what i showed you in the back there just isolate it by turning it 90 degrees um and that'll just isolate from the gas you do not just so you know <laughs> don't need to do that every time you get out of the vehicle turning that gas bottle off is plenty safe enough all right because turning the gas bottle off isolates all gas from the bottle to the van um, the only reason you should ever need to use any of those isolators is for example if you're on holiday and you think to yourself oh i think there's something wrong with the fridge on gas you can isolate the fridge on gas and carry on with your holiday and not worry about that one appliance all right it's all just about isolating an individual appliance and in fact you shouldn't ever really need to do that it's mainly just for our purposes you know for testing if there's a gas leak somewhere we can isolate them and work out where they're coming from and things like that so in all honesty you shouldn't ever really need to use those isolators for any reason oven um you've got an a uh, igniter for the oven the grill and the burners at the top so that's just literally from this button here the grill so the oven one is here the grill one is here you do need to leave this door open when you're using the grill and you've got your grill pan with handle in there which looks like it's never been used um, your four burners at the top I'm not going to show you how to use those because you know it's just the same as any household cooker um, but you've got a little diagram showing you exactly which one does which and like I said these all work with the igniter as well all you need to do is put these back down when you finish and the glass the only thing I will tell you or ask you is once you've used any of these so whether that be the grill uh, the only one you don't really need to worry about is the oven because the ovens bit is here um, the grill heat comes directly through here so any four burners or the grill if you've just used it do not put this glass down straight away because the glass will just shatter um, so you need to make sure that not only it does say here glass lids may shatter when heated but it's not just closing it on the flame if you've if you've just turned any of these burners off or the grill off 
and you put the lid straight down it will just it will just shatter after a few minutes so just make sure that you leave them to cool down before you put this lid back down again uh right so there's the okay boiler controls are back there so i'll show you the um the space heater right so like i said a minute ago the space heater and the boiler can both be used on either gas or electric um most people would use both of those on gas most of the time to be honest um but it is completely up to you how you want to use it so to use your heating on gas is all i mean the whole the whole heating system is all just from this one here but um to actually use it on gas you have to be right here so all you have to do to light it up on gas turn this dial around and you can hear the the clicker yeah the ignite the ignition so then look down in this little hole here i'm not sure if you're going to see it on the video or not there you go you can see the igniter there just about so now all i'm going to do is push down on sort of two or three so if you watch what happens let me try and find that light that igniter again so you can see it's lit, it's lit straight up and the igniter has stopped all right so at the moment i'm still holding this down so that is your pilot flame okay like a like a like a boiler basically so that's your pilot you can see the thermocouple in there lighting up nice and orange all i'm going to do now is lift up on this so if you watch what happens i'll lift up and then turn it around to sort of six or seven so you saw that the main flame kicked in and that's it you can see both flames left and right now are both on so that's your heating on on gas all right so that's the flame in there on once you've done that you've got the fan setting here push that to the left and you can turn it up between one and five the fan itself is that little round bit at the back there you can just about see it and that will just pump the air around to any of the little circular vents that you've got around the vehicle so that one down there um, there should be one in the bathroom they'll, ju they'll just be dotted around all right, so your heating will just be dispersed around the vehicle nice and evenly. Um, and that, that is literally it. That's all you have to do to light it up on gas and use it on gas. All right, to turn it off, so you see there's flames still on. Turning it off, you just go all the way back around to the left to the zero. And then you'll be able to see in there, thermocouple's just going from orange now and it's off, okay? My advice as well, would be if you've had this lit up on gas for a little while or even on electric which i'll show you in a minute leave the fan going for a few minutes just to you know disperse the heat a bit more evenly um, rather than just switching it straight off um right so that's how you use it on gas that's the heating you've also got if you want to use this heater on mains so if your hookup's plugged in you can turn this button on here so you can see no light on there because i've not got the hookup plugged in at the moment but you can turn that button on there that says ultra heat and then come over here to the bed and you've got this little button here which also says ultra heat okay so assuming you've got your hookup plugged in and you've turned that button on there you can then turn that outer ring there to either 500 1000 or 2000 which is the amount of watts that you want to use okay so essentially in there where we, when we use it on gas, we lit up a literal flame inside there, and that's what heated it up. Whereas if you want to use it on the mains, there's just three elements in there, a 500 watt, a 1000 watt, and a 2000 watt, and it just heats them up, basically. So you want to heat them up. I would advise you to use a 1000, not 2000, because 2000 just uses too much power. Um, so put it on a 1000 and put your fan on. And, you know, after a good few minutes or so, you have hot air pumping around just in the same way as you did um, when, yeah, when you lit it up on gas. The gas is a lot more efficient, to be fair. Like, you know, it will get hotter a lot quicker uh, than the mains, but it's just up to you. If you don't have any gas and you've got mains, not, you know, why not? All right. So ultra heat will only work when the ultra heat switch is on in the wardrobe, okay? The other switch just there next door to it says ultra store now ultra store is the name of your boiler so your boiler is a truma ultra store boiler okay so 
If you want to heat the water up inside the boiler, assuming that you've already made sure it's full, like I showed you earlier, if you want to heat the water up inside the boiler via the electric, so when your hookup's plugged in, just literally turn that switch on there. All right, you can turn that button on there and as soon as you do that and the light comes on, the water inside that boiler will be being heated up via an element. And that's it, there's no other, there's nothing else you have to do, just turn that left hand switch on there and your water heating will come on, all right? You do need to make sure that you turn that off when you finish with it as well, because if you forget that that's on when you plug your hookup in, that you know if you forget that it, if you forget that it's on there's no water in the boiler you're going to be in big trouble as well so make sure that you only turn that on as and when you need to but that's how you use the boiler on electric i'll just turn this fan off now so that's your two buttons in there and your uh, power supply unit all that sort of stuff and finally the way to use your boiler on gas because like i said you can use the heating and the the uh, hot water on gas or electric. If you want to light the boiler up on gas, make sure that you've taken off your cover outside. And again, like I said, make sure that you've filled the boiler up with water first. But all you have to do is turn this dial around to the right just once so that it goes to that little flame symbol and then set your temperature between 30 or 70. My advice again would be, and you don't have to do this, it's up to you, it's just advice. Um, I would choose about sort of 50 to 60, no higher than that personally, because I think it gets a bit too hot, but they're made to do it. So, you know, the choice is there. So that's how you use it. It's that, you know, it's as simple as that. When it gets to that temperature, it will turn itself off and back on as and when it needs to. Um, but to be honest, once you've finished with it and you've had your shower or use your hot water, whatever, just make sure that you switch that off. You've got your 12 volt socket in there and your aerial point as well as your mains point here so if you had a 12 volt tv you could plug it into there and then into your main your aerial point if you had a mains powered tv you plug it in there and your aerial point there so you've got all those options there um depending on what you you know if you want to even if you want to use a tv you might not want to use it i don't know um so that's your heating and your boiler I'm showing you the fridge and the cooker so you notice obviously when you saw the van that the sink is just here so the reason for that is that it means that you get a lot more space in the bathroom obviously for your full-size shower and toilet um, but it's because you can pull this across here and marry it up in the middle so you can use this as like a i know it sort of feels like it's kind of out, out in the open but when you have this across it kind of is separate anyway so that's why they do that just so you know, uh, I'll put that back, I can do it. I have to evaluate what I can do with one hand. Um, so in the bathroom here, like I said, you've got your uh, shower up there, which is just literally a mixer tap like all the other ones. Um, and to be honest, all I'm gonna show you there is the toilet because the, the rest of it's so straightforward and easy. Um, the toilet itself, Again, well, it is straightforward and easy, but it's just easy when you know how. So you've got the flush up here. So you literally lift and push. That is how you get your flush fluid to pump around the bowl. So the idea is you put your flush fluid around, use the toilet, and then use your flush fluid again afterwards. To drain it out into the cassette, you pull this lever, that drains into the cassette, and then you push it back. You have to push it back because if you don't push it back, you will not be able to take the cassette out from outside. When it's in its open position, the cassette is locked. All right. So unless you break it, you won't be able to take that out. So, but yeah, that's it really. All I would recommend uh, other than that is um, before you head off driving, making sure that all of your windows um, are in the closed latched position um skylights make sure your skylights are down and also in their latched positions and things like that are up otherwise they'll just swing around like that the whole time and it's really annoying uh make sure all of your glass is definitely down because these do just break you have got a little clip just there holding that one up um another thing really if i know you've got all these nice blinds oh, just pulled that out too far You've got all these nice blinds all over the place um, but if you leave them up or down they will just kind of 
uh, I don't know, they, they kind of sag when you drive. So it's important to leave those where they are in the in the open position when you're driving. But you don't have to, just to, yeah. So I think I've covered everything I can. Um, if there's anything else you think I've missed out or anything you want going over again, just let us know. Uh, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon to collect your van. Thanks very much.